Hey man, how's your movie guy? That's right. Thank you for tuning in to Hey Man, How's Your Movie Going? The show where we're always on time, otherwise we owe you money. And so far I only owe $4. So um, I'm just really trying to decide if I should go without hat or hat. We think we're going to do a vote on that because I didn't, I'm not going to lie, I didn't comb my hair. I did wash my hair yesterday though, but that's mainly what the show is going to be about. So, um, all right. Uh, today's a very special episode. I want to make sure that uh, everything's looking good. So bear with me one second while I check this upon YouTube. I just want to make sure it's broadcasting because one time I did an episode like this and nobody could see it. So I just want to make sure. Um, or Ken, Mora, when you get a chance... I don't know if you want to check it or if somebody can just leave me a comment, but, uh, but so far so good. All right. So, uh, hello everybody. Welcome to episode 11. Um, if anybody's out there, just leave me a comment and, uh, I'm going to be checking this, uh, on Facebook and on Instagram to make sure that it is playing correctly. This is a great, Great to do this at the intro. All right, so let's see here. Are we on live? Let's click on it. Yes, we are on live. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now for the great uh, show that's about to begin. Um, my guest today is a friend and a lover, but not my lover. So don't start any rumors, Ken. All right. Um, he is a longtime friend, uh, longtime lover. Not my, again, not my love. And love you long time. So we've all tied that all together. Um, but ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome the wonderful, magnificent Ken Mora. Ah, there you go. All right, Ken. Okay. Me. Be spectacular. Go. Ah, very good. And uh, and what the, me, me so horny. Me so horny. Uh, <laughs> he went out and purchased that just for this moment, and he's going to throw it away afterwards. That's right. I'm uh, I'm I'm the uh, what's that prop comedian's name? Uh, Carrot Top. I'm not yes, Carrot Top yes. of uh, casting. Yes. So Ken, I I just want to make sure I. We are live, but I don't see anybody commenting yet, which could easily just mean they don't like us at all. It, it could be, because uh, I but, am. Um, but I just want to make sure we're live. I, I'm I'm going to be totally paranoid. I thought, about I thought it. it was very daring of you to. Oh, we are live. live because we have one viewer. Oh, because I, I, I'm I'm known as the fifth wheel of uh, YouTube casting. That's so just I sad. That was very daring of you. To... So, all right. So, um. All right, so I just say suggest we go forward, okay, and uh, and bravely, um, Ken. While I'm talking, while I'm vamping, do me a favor. Check your. Can you? Is there a way to check your YouTube feed to see if you can see it live? Ah, very good. Okay, uh, on another browser. Let me see. Okay. All right, and I'll I'll just intro some stuff. I'll I'll intro. Uh, who is this man na named Ken Mora, and why? Why? Just why? Well, Ken, again, I said he is a longtime friend, been friends for um, many a year. Ken was very, very, very Thanks instrumental. For, um, uh, yes, I see. Right here. Okay, we're live. <laughs> Ken was very, very, very instrumental in uh, me ever meeting Bill Plimpton. So, uh, Ken is the guy who set up the original interview where I really got to know him. I tagged along with Raul and uh, we interviewed Bill Plimpton. I gave him some DVDs. I'd met him Bill Plimpton before at Comic-Con, but you're the one that really like, hey, like set it up. And uh, that's a marriage that's lasted many a year. Um, Ken uh, is also one of those guys. Joshua always kids that I know everybody or that like he'll run an artist and they all know me. But, <laughs> 
Uh, oh, thank you, Didi. See, and this is validation. You are live and all good. I am all good. That is proof because it's in writing. Thank you, Didi. And Ken's good too. You ain't bad, half bad yourself, Ken Mora. But um, yeah, so Ken's the guy who set up all the blue plumped and stuff. And I'm, ha I'm actually half in the bag, so. That's true. Well, by the end of the show, you'll be full bag. So you'll be double bagged. So, and uh, a little but, bit. But, but biodegradable and recycled. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and you will be biodegraded very much on the show. <laughs> so Ken is a writer. Ken, have you ever been an artist? You just seem like you would be an artist as well. Uh, I have. Actually, my degree is in uh, fine arts from, uh, from USC. Awesome. Oh, okay. Well, you're way overqualified for this show. Uh, I'm afraid so. But, you know, the times are hard. So, uh, you know, so thank you for the uh, for the uh, Starbucks coupons. Uh, yeah, it's just I just printed it from the Internet. It's not really good. Oh. But uh, <laughs> but Ken is a I, I know you primarily as a writer. You've written a lot, including. And if I was a smart person, I would have went and got the Caravaggio issue that I have, but it's also available in trade paperback. Is that not true, Mr. Mora? It is. I, I wish there were a, uh, a a copy of it somewhere that I could show you, uh, perhaps in the hardback awesome. with all my award badges on the cover. Uh, but, Ken, uh, oh, it seems like, your, seems like your signal's going to go out right now. Oh, and mysteriously, maybe when we come back, Ken will have that issue just by chance. Uh, but we can't see him right now. And I'm not vamping for time. I'm just trying to communicate something with you and not buy Ken time to find his, 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 his book. But, well, look at that. Oh. What a coincidence. So, Ken, let me see the cover there, Ken. Uh, Ken is so the writer. Is, uh, I, I found an actual, I, I duped an actual publisher, uh, Marcosio, is, who's uh, the leading uh publisher of uh of indie otherwise indie uh uh graphic novels in the uk and uh so uh, he didn't have to do i have a trade paperback which is affordable uh this hardback uh version which is not affordable and uh of course the kindle and uh, comiXology version which is uh is downright cheap so so yes. you can you can get in a variety and it's a it's a, a biography of uh the artist Caravaggio, and some uh, some folks have had some nice things to say about it in in the back uh, here. So, uh, yes. so you know, just search uh, Ken Mora or uh, or Caravaggio manga at uh, Amazon, and uh, it can be yours. I was thinking of using this show as a scan, like you hold up the book, oh. very still, every page. And then that way we can screenshot or it. You you could probably even uh, do the barcode. Uh, oh yeah, just scan it with your phone, and Ken will show up in your home. So, <laughs> so um, uh, so uh, we have a uh, a mutual friend now. My friend first, though, Christopher uh, Runciman. Um, yes. and when I told him about you, I said you guys seem like you guys would really get along. And then I told him the book that you did. He's like, what? And he went, grab. He has the book. So, yeah, he's the person. one. He's the one who bought it. He's the uh, fan. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the guy. <laughs> what are so, the odds? Um, yeah. So Ken's a writer. He's also written some stuff that's spicy and titillating <laughs> and um, and and not safe for work. That's right. No, yeah. it's not. It's with, not with actual, rated. With actual ladings uh, in, in the book. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> not X rated. It's like. R-rated, but it's still no, it's it uh, it's very European. Yes, and if uh, you drink too many of these, then European. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. You'll that's you'll right. be a pain. <laughs> so, anyways, Ken and I have been friends for a long time, and he, uh, you've done voices for me too. You were in Revengeance. Um, yes, he played a character named Cujo. Cujo, yes. Uh, opposite and... Matthew Modine, yeah. So it's, uh... Oh, Matthew Modine. Do you remember when Matthew Modine was in it and we couldn't um, really tell anybody he was in it because of SAG? Yeah, oh. they, they wouldn't. They wouldn't give us the ultra low budget, uh, even though you could not get more ultra and low than than the budget. 
in that well, from, from what I understand from Mr. Modine himself, yes, we're name dropping that Matthew Modine. Yeah. Uh, Matthew Modine was involved with Revengeance from a very early stage of it. Uh, he was always going to do a voice in it. And so was his daughter, Ruby, who's uh, really, really talented. So I was like, we were super thrilled to have both of them in the film, but we couldn't really advertise it with them in it because of SAG, because it was non-SAG. And, you know, we didn't want to get anybody in trouble. Um, Dave Foley, same story. He was in it as well. But um, as months went on, they bought, they all reached out to me. Well, they, they all said, I don't care. You can tell whoever I'm in it. So yeah. we kind of did that. We also did that to kind of protect Bill at the time. But it was a weird time. There was like a, um, they had an ultra low budget category that we fit in, but they had just removed it. And they were going through some changes. So we were we we made Revengeance at a really weird time. It was limbo because we made it right when everybody was getting really like the cancel culture was just starting to come on. Even though Revengeance, I mean, everybody gets it equally in Revengeance. So it's not really like a mean bully cartoon. Everybody gets it. You know, the right, the left, the center, everybody. Yeah. But um, but. Like, I don't think I could make that film today. I don't think I would want to make that film today because it's a little bit too close to. Um... Well, no, though, uh, though being canceled is kind of chic now. So, uh... oh, is it? Okay. Well, speaking of chic, um, look at this character. Look at this ah. guy. <laughs> We're going to talk about this guy in a second. Uh, his name is Cujo. And uh, this is the guy that. Ken Mora played in Revengeance. He was one of the bikers. This is my version of it. I didn't get Bill Plimpton's drawing, but um, but uh, when I first heard Ken do the voice for Cujo, which is kind of like a, he was kind of lumbering, kind of like kind of slow, kind of do, you know. But it was just so good, so good. It's one of my favorite things in the film. Yeah, I really, I, I, I got a, a, in a fight with. Uh, uh, Wait, Matthew Modine's character was um... his character was um, Cujo and Sid. He was oh, Sid. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He they were kind of like the biker version of Abbott and Costello. It's like, except yeah, for uh... yes, yeah, Sid, Sid. The 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 parking meters uh, uh, is is read out. So it's it's your turn to put in the the quarter. Yeah. yeah. So Ma Matthew Modine spent most of Revengeance just yelling at Ken <laughs> on and off the air. No. Which I richly deserved, really. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's Cujo. So if you watch Revengeance and you see Cujo in it, um, he's one of the Inland Emperors for that biker gang. So he did a great job. Very, very happy. Um, but we're not here to talk about you anymore, Ken. You've no, just enough. got to stop it. Okay? Enough about me. Enough yeah. about you. Yeah. Um, according to my list here, and we're right on schedule, um, I wanted to tell you about a new character in um, my film called The Full Fungus. That's why you're here. That's what the whole title of the show is. Hey, man, how's your movie going? It's because I'm making a movie called The Full Fungus, and uh, it's a feature-length animated film, and it's coming along really well. Um, I feel like if you've watched this these shows... From episode eight to now we're on 11, I feel like I've been stuck in this, this, the same scenes. Like, but I will say this from episode eight to now, those same scenes are way more polished. Like they're way more, they have more cutaway shots and they have, they have, um, you know, by the way, Gary's trying to take credit for the movie. He's saying he made it and Gary Hodges, that is not true. You did not make the movie. I haven't even made the movie. Okay, let's just get that straight. But uh, okay, now that that's clear. But uh, but yeah, like, um, and I, I want to say something too. The scenes that I've shown previews for, including tonight when I show the little preview scenes, in the final version of the film, these scenes are going to be not drastically different, but they're going to be quite different. Because, for one, I wanted to talk about this. Um, Charlie Rossman, who's playing the lead character, Chino Diamond, he's going to do 
a voiceover, kind of a noir, LA noir voiceover, you know, like it was five o'clock and, you know, and I, you know, that type of thing, you know, a lot of driving scenes with him talking, lots of scenery scenes of LA and stuff. So it's going to be a real LA noir type film. But speaking of LA noir, we're sponsored by Philippe's, the original Philippe's French dip sandwiches. Mm -mm, good. Okay. So uh, go Google that if you're not from LA. But, uh, and then, uh, so anyway, so I wanted to tell you guys about a new, another character that I haven't told you about. Um, first, actually, let me reverse engineer this a little bit. Okay. Um, share this file with you. So much of this film is about a character, uh, is driven by a character named Emiliano Koviak. Emiliano Koviak, right there. Um, he is a, a villain uh, or a hero, if you like villains. But he's a New, a New York City mobster, uh, really powerful in the 60s and 70s, some of the 80s. But right now, this is an old picture of him, probably 1971, 1972. Because uh, right now, he... in in the full fungus, he's 103 years old. And I knew this would happen. Look at this. Cat and paste. Cat is in love with Emiliano Koviak. And I'm trying very hard to figure out how I can make cash off of this. And I just can't figure it out. I, if I could just make him real somehow. I'm going to go back to the uh, DNA drawing board and... and uh, I'll figure that out. So anyway, so yes. But uh, Emiliano Koviak is the driving force of the full fungus. He is a jazz collector, um, was also really good friends with, um, and let's see here. He was really good friends with our one of our protagonists of this film called, uh, named, uh, named uh mink fungus i'm sorry i'm trying to do i'm trying to multitask here and if you don't believe me let's look at another picture how about that this is uh this is a picture probably taken in 1961 62 63 around that era uh this is uh that's uh mink fungus right there and uh and to his right is koviak and uh, some of their friends taken in a club. But uh, so Koviak was was kind of like a patron to Mink. He was, you know, he paid for all this stuff. He, you know, because he wanted Mink to keep making music for him, keep making the music. Uh, Mink Fungus was addicted to every type of thing you can think of. And Koviak supplied him with it. So that's kind of like the circle of life they had. Mink would make the music. Koviak would supply the recreation and it kept going and kept and it kept going and going until it didn't, and that's when the trouble happened. But uh, that's what the full fungus is. The full fungus is a piece of music that was uh, Mink Mink's opus, and he died before he could give it to Koviak. So Koviak's 103 years old and still wants that piece of music. And uh, there's some quotes here for you. Now, Kat, is this regarding Koviak or, or us? I'm just saying because we're older, man. I'm just saying, you know. So, um, and uh, da, 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 let's see. If we, and one more, one more quote. Emiliano told me, see, an old men read like this. Told me he might pretend he doesn't know me tonight, just so. No one else gets jealous. Well, I'm jealous because I wish I knew I could talk to him. So, anyway, so that's the whole movie. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> so the question is, where does Ken Mora come in in this film? That's why is this this guy here? Because Ken plays a character that I'm going to bring up right now. I'm going to bring him up right now. Um. A character that's pivotal in this this film. There's so many pivotal people pivoting all over this this movie. Pivotal, pivot, pivoting to the left, pivoting to the right. 
just like uh, uh, territorial cats. There's pivoting going on all the time. I was cleaning up pivot all day. Yeah. So um, here is Ken Moore's character right there. That is Ennis Gruber. He is a professor of music, but more well known as being a music producer. Um, in fact, all of his prof professorial scenes were cut from this film. <laughs> so now he's just a professor in name, not in action, but um, I'll have to put a doctorate up on his wall or some, you know, some kind of degrees on his wall. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, because we meet him in the recording studio. In fact, in fact, I want to show you something. Uh, Ken Moore might have seen this earlier. I sent it to him, but this is a world premiere. Da, 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 da. Um, nobody else has seen this yet. Uh, okay. And here we go. This is the first scene that the world is seeing of Ennis Gruber in the studio. That's right. There we go. So uh, this is Ennis Gruber in his recording studio. Um, yes, that's Carl, his uh, right-hand man that he yells at and fires every day. And um, <clears throat> Ken hasn't even seen this, but this is kind of Ennis in his stomping ground in the studio. And a lot of stuff happens in the studio. Um, I think I can zoom in on some of this. Hang on. If you will notice, let's see here. Um, there we go. You can see that, right? There's some, uh, whoops, there's some rock posters happening over here. And I'm going to show you closer versions of those um, because, hey, Ennis, how's it going? Uh, because I made... I've been over the last few days just making really quick versions of these rock posters that to hang up all over the place. Um, these are these are originals all right here. This is counterclockwise, by the way, but uh, this is a little drama cue from uh, All That Glitters, and this is a character that I've never used. Uh, this is Lucius Delicious. Actually, he's in Foreverland. I'm sorry, he's a character oh. in Foreverland. Yeah, Egyptian uh, Funk Storm is the album. And then there's this lady right here. Ken, do you know who that is, Ken? Oh, yeah, that's uh, Ennis's uh, obsession. Uh, Selena uh, Gomez. Selena Gomez, that's right, yeah. And so, yeah, I Ennis believe... is, he's obsessed with her, by the way. So now, one, of, one of those records on the wall, I think, is something uh, he wants her to autograph someday. Yes, well, that's, that's going to be in his office. This is... Uh, but uh, his his studio is in Hollywood somewhere. It's really junky outside. Here's some modern um, mechanical. Corey Kerr will uh, he'll appreciate this. The functionality of all this. <laughs> By the way, this cartoon is littered with power burst, power drink, ah. and uh, and Crystal Creek uh, water, as well as Turaco Cola, which I don't have a picture of, but. Um, and of course, you've got the uh, the speaker system here. The brand is Merkin. It's very popular, and uh, and that's pretty much uh, Ken's character. I'm just going to do that with Ken's character. I'm just going to move him around like this. Yeah, what do you say? But, what, uh, after, after all that, Crystal Creek and uh, I like how he has notes. By the way, very very subtle notes. But, uh, <laughs> but there's that. What happens if I close it? Okay. So um, anyway, so I have all of Ken's um, dialogue. We have it all recorded. And uh, oh, look, Ken. Ah, uh, Wendy. Ken. How are you doing? She's a she's a, a Ken Mora fan, by the way. Yes, yes. But uh, thank you, Dee. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and. Uh, do you know, by the way, Ken, this is an oddball question. Do you know Wendy? I do. I do. Yes. And yeah. Dee Dee, do you know Wendy? Because Dee Dee said, I'm making connections here. Dee Dee said, Wendy. And now Dee Dee says, Christopher. And Christopher says, 
he says, Whoa, who's that handsome? <laughs> it's like a love fest here. No, just saying hello. Well, you're allowed to, okay? This is a free country that I run and am the dictator of and make all the rules for and take away your freedoms. So, okay. So, um, all right. So I am also going to show a clip. But before I do, I wanted to ask you a question, Ken. Well, I don't have a clip of Ennis. I haven't animated Ennis yet. Um, so a real quick, uh, not a spoiler. There's a lot of characters in this film. If you guys want to know how many characters there are in this film, go watch something like, um, go watch something like Big Lebowski or something. It's very similar to that. There's just a ton of, like a lot of scenes, a lot of short little scenes and a lot of characters. Um, the clip I was going to show, by the way, Gary, don't get too excited, but it's a, a clip I've shown last week, but it's edited a little bit differently and it's a raw clip. Um, I'm going to show a bowling clip right now, but it's not the bowling. It's the interview after the bowling from a, a character called the Gopher Snake, Jazz Richardson, the Gopher Snake. And it's a cutaway, but it's the full clip of it. It's a clip of a bowling interview on a TV on a wall. And during the film, it cuts away back and forth to something with that clip. But I'm going to show the whole magical clip right now. So um, Gary says, because he, he says... Uh, he says, woo, clip time. I know what you mean. He said ISIP, but, you know, ISIP is uh, Dutch for clip, right? Okay. And then people laughing at Gary, ha, 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 and shaming him. The gopher snake. The gopher snake strikes again. That's a, that's my Chris Runciman imitation. Uh, Chris Runciman plays the, um, the uh, bowling announcer. One of a couple of roles. But uh, by the way, Ken, the big catchphrase that's going to take over the nation uh, from this film is, oh, that's what we're doing? That's what we're doing now? Because Gary Hodges says that in the basketball opening scene. Uh -huh. He says, <laughs> yes, that's very deep. Okay, so um, before I show the clip, Ken, do you remember the voice that you did for um, Ennis Gruber. And I'm not going to force you to do it because I know how that feels when people say dance monkey because they tell me that do the voice for this, do the voice for that. And I'm I can not dance monkey though. Okay. Because if not, I have a, I think I have an audio clip of it. Um, I can play an audio clip. Yes, it, it, it's, all, it, it's almost too new. I, I would have, I, would I, have to I couldn't, it. yeah, I couldn't tell you either. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Let's go back to the record here. All right. I'm going to play just a quick sample of, actually, let me do this. Let's uh, show the, the file of Ennis. Where'd it go? Ennis's face. Okay. Whoops. Can you see Ennis's face? Did it come out? Yeah. And then I'll play a little audio clip of his voice. All right. Hold on. Let me read my email first. <laughs> There's only 10, 15 messages. Hang on. I'm going to. Okay. So here's Ken Mora as Ennis Gruber. Let's see what he says here. Hey, uh, while I have you here, how much would you charge to tell someone like, you know, Silly De Gomez or someone like that? That's the one I have to have you redo, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it does sound like tell, not tail. Yeah. Yes. He's saying, <laughs> how much would it cost to tail someone like Selena Gomez? Um, here, I'm trying to play a non spoiler one. <laughs> yeah, they're in the hard way, like I did. When Selena's people issued that restraining order against me. I get it. Mink Fungus was an interesting dude. Addicted to just about everything. Drugs, alcohol, gambling, sex, you name it. 
but he was also a musical genius. He used to pack the jazz clubs around the East Coast. <laughs> um, and it's I'm laughing because I know all, where everything is going. But uh, <laughs> anyways, that's uh, Ennis. Ennis Gruber is kind of kind of like a. So when I first started talking to Ken, we were who were we saying like we were using examples of like oh kind of a combination of. Oh yeah, well, we 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 started out with uh, uh, Anthony Bourdain, uh, which which was tough because he's kind of got a, a flat New York uh, inflection. So I kind of went there, and I kept going. Uh, it kept coming out Frank Sinatra, and then it got a little too New York, and then and then the last thing he threw at me was uh, Tarantino. <laughs> and, and then I, I literally tied a vocal cord in knots. So, uh, so then I, <laughs> so I, I scrapped that. <laughs> and I so, figured, well, everybody typically goes like low register. So I, I tried to just do something higher and more. So uh, you know, it's one really cool thing is that, you know, you see historical figures like Lincoln or whoever, you know, before there were actual audio, audio recordings of them. And then you wonder, what did they sound? What did Napoleon's voice sound like? You know, um, I had Ennis Gruber design for months and months and months, but I never even tried to do a voice for him. And I had a voice inside my head, what he would sound like, but I knew I wouldn't be doing the voice for it. I knew somebody else would. Wasn't sure who, but then immediately I'm like, oh, can't, this would be so good because the combination of Ken and then this style character is a really weird mix. And, um, and I, I thought this would be like one of those occasions, like, what does this guy sound like? And then you hear his voice. And then within five seconds of you seeing Ennis animated, you'll this will be the only voice that ever exists for him because it's so bizarre. The things he says, he's kind of a he's kind of aggressive, but not um, not energetically aggressive. Right. It's like the things he says are very like, oh, no, it's this way. It's like yes. this. Yeah. Snottily passive aggressive. Yes. Yeah. But he's also aggressive aggressive too, because he's a gun collector. So <laughs> yes. Aggressive. He uh snotty, snottily aggressive. So um one fact I want to give about Ennis um is that uh Ennis, besides being a, a music professor that we never touch on the movie. I, mean, I it, you know what it's gonna be mentioned probably in, in one of Charlie Rossman's uh, voiceovers, his noir voiceover, like when he's headed to you, he's going to explain who you are. And there might be some photos of your past, um, and including the being a professor or an ex-professor. Maybe he got excommunicated from the college for inappropriate relationships because <laughs> he's that type of guy. No, no doubt a, a restraining order or two involved. Yeah. Yeah. And then hence the, the Selena Gomez uh, connection backstory but he also was a musician in the 70s and he was a um again pivotal member of uh, a punk rock group i believe i told you the name um mary tyler whore so yes. he, he was I the bass that. the bass player for mary tyler whore so that's kind of <laughs> how he got into the music business so he has a rich 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 backstory so I'm really, this is one of this. I told Ken when he did the voices for this, this was another shot in the arm, but a lot of shots in the arm here. I think I'm completely, completely vaccinated for the fungus. So yeah, <laughs> but uh, anyway, so Ennis Gruber will rock on and uh, he is instrumental in some events that happen in this too. Um, I should probably tell everybody this too. Um, Maybe a third of this movie. Ken, you're really good at math. What's a little bit less than a third? A Let's quarter? See. No. Yeah, a quarter. A quarter would be less than a third. That would be a. A little more than a quarter, but a little less than a third. <laughs> that would be a two sixes or. A trexagon, four. it's called. A trexagon. Five twelfths. Corey, Corey, where's uh, where's Corey? 
Two fifths. There you go. Two fifths. Okay, there you go. Yeah. I forgot we have very smart viewers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, anyways, uh, two fifths of this movie is flashback. There are scenes in this film that are full flashbacks. Like you're watching a f another movie and you're watching things that happened in the past, completely flashback. And, then, and there are also flashbacks that are more um, narrated. You know, oh, this, this guy did this and that, and it's just a couple of photos and hear that. Your scene that you uh, have narrated is one of those scenes. It's very, it explains kind of the history, a lot of the history of mink fungus, the relationship, and it's it's pretty quick, and it's a lot of just That's right. scenes. That think, go think Pulp Fiction over decades. Yes, think that. Think that, and we will we will do that. So, um, by the way, Dee Dee figured it out. Christopher had that memorized. <laughs> from, from seventh grade. He had that memorized. <laughs> um, so um, with that being said, I'm going to actually show a clip. Okay, so uh, this clip has nothing to do with Ennis Gruber. This is uh, uh, J uh, Jazz Richardson, the bowler, who is also a pivotal, another pivot pivoting dude. There's so many pivots. Um, who's an important character in this film. Uh, this is an interview with him after a bowling match. I might have shown some clips of this interview before, but I wanted to show you a cutaway. It's a it's one you know twenty five second clip or so of an interview he does after he won a bowling match, and I want to show you what way down the line, episodes down the line, I'll show you the finished version. But there's going to be a lot of cuts in and out of this scene that you're going to see. But this is the un cut version of this little interview you, you'll get a, a feel for what um the gopher snake's about so and i had so, shown some of you guys that uh i had shown some um let's see here all right here we go this is going to be tricky because i forgot showing clips is always tricky but we are going to do it Let's see if this works. There it is. You can see that, right? Yes, you can. All right, let's play it. We're standing here with 11-time PBLA champion Jazz Richardson. Quit the match there. Can you tell us how you managed to pull off such an amazing victory? The lanes were running slick out there today. I had to pull a couple of my shots. Unpredictable. But I'm not about easy. I'm about winning. Doing what it takes to win. You leave me an opening like that, I'm going to come and eat your dinner. Any words of encouragement for your fans out there thinking of getting into the game? I'll tell you what. If there's somebody out there thinking about following a dream, don't sit there like a scaredy cat. Winners win. Losers lose. That's the rules of the game. You heard it here first, folks. The gopher snake has spoken. That's right. Wow. All right. <laughs> that is Christopher Runciman doing the voice. I love that voice. That bowling <laughs> announcement voice. So that scene, that scene, just so you guys know ahead of time, that scene happens. It's kind of a motivational scene where a character named Wilt, who's the son of Mink Fungus, uh, sees that and gets motivated to go after his dreams, which his first dream is to get on a game show. So anyway, so that's that. And, uh, Christopher gives it a two out of five. Wait a minute. No, he doesn't. That's two fifths. Sorry. Um, so, uh, and then Dee Dee clap. She claps. Hello. All right. Um, I like to do this every once in a while. I like to, uh, because I'm thoughtful and, and I care, I like to uh, pay tribute to my sponsors. So we're going to watch a quick commercial and we'll be right back. Uh, here and you can go to the bathroom real quick if you can go really quick. You're an American original, my friend. You don't want anything that tastes half ass, especially your beer. You want the American flavor! Do you want some foreign beer ballet dancing around your taste buds? <laughs> I don't think so. 
You want the American flavor? You want the American flavor? Old Gold Beer. Taste the pride. Thank you. I mean, they are giving us the big bucks. They also sponsored the boxing match in this film, or the MMA match, and they also sponsored the bowling championships in this film. So they're all over the place. By the way, um, when I showed the bowling clip, Christopher Runciman says, that animation is the best. My character is so hot. So hot. <laughs> so um, if you've got any hard, hard-hitting questions for Ken Mora, by the way, Feel free. He'll answer anything, including his social security number, bank pin, whatever you want to know, where the body is hidden. So just saying. Or he'll play the trumpet. Speaking of playing trumpets and blowing horns, Ken, is it true that you play the saxophone? I've heard this. Uh, no, it is not. It is not. I play I, I, I I don't even play the trumpet, really. I just, I practice the trumpet. You practice the trumpet. What do you do. play? Uh, can you play? Can you play? No, I don't mean right now. I would never do that to you. But can, are you able to play a full song or you just play along? Well, you know, uh, there, there are several uh, stages to playing the trumpet, several hurdles. Uh, first is just being able to squeak out a note and then there's the hurdle of having your face freeze because of all the tension. And then there's uh, uh, and then there's just being able to relax. And I'm at the place where I can play, I can squeeze my way through a song, or I can actually play measures decently and then trail off. So getting it all together is where I'm at now. And if you start trailing off right now, Ken, I'm going to cut you off, okay? Because I don't know how much you've had to drink, but it's that glass is empty. <laughs> By the way, how empty is your glass right now? It's, uh, it's gone. It, yeah. Well, Ken, actually, I don't want to tell you this, but we're all here for a different reason. Uh, Have you ever heard of an intervention? Oh, well, <laughs> Ken, this is your life. Actually, we got a real question. We have an actual question for you. Ken, um, okay. Do you have Didi, uh, who actually does an incredible live stream every day, pretty much. And she has thousands of millions. And that's an actual math term. Thousands of millions of viewers and subscribers that watch her channel. when she does. Uh, it's more than crafting. Uh, we should come up with a term for it, but it's, um, I like to call it DD constructionism. Oh, so, yes. Nice. Nice. So she does DD constructionism and, uh, and it's pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. And, and her fans are, or her fans, her friends, her family, they're um, really nice people, nice people. A couple, few of them are here because of her. Okay. She's a gang leader. I didn't want to say it. She's a gang leader. But, uh, <laughs> Anyways, um, but she 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 asked about that. She asked that question, and and uh, I I asked you that at the beginning of this. Do you have time to do any art work, or do you just do writing now? Uh, you know, since uh, since uh, writing took over, uh, it's really squeezed out uh, painting. So I really don't uh, paint much. Uh, you know, every once in a while, I will find something. That I go, damn! I wish. I wish I still painted because uh, I wish I'd thought of that. Uh, you know, most recently, uh, if I can put a, a plug in for for a friend, um, let's see where where's where's my hand? Okay, uh, this is the work of Terry Wolfinger. Uh, he did this month's uh, cover of Mad Magazine, uh, which he does quite often. Uh, Famous Monsters Magazine. Uh, you'll see him at Monster Palooza all the, all the time. Uh, and this is uh, a mashup of the Invisible Man with, uh, uh, so he calls this uh, Invisible Man patriotic. And uh, I saw that, you know, and, and he's great because he's a, he's a commercial, he's a legit commercial artist. Uh, but every once in a while, he will do something that strays into the area 
of fine art that uh, that just blows me away. And so I saw this, and I just go, uh, Terry, you know, I gotta have, uh, I gotta, I gotta own one of those. And I said, uh, you know, it was it was just like so close to the Fourth of July. I said, you know, you gotta edition that, and and I want I want the first run of that edition. And so uh, I twisted his arm. I came over. I, I threatened his wife. I kidnapped his kid. And, uh, and so I got the first, uh, uh, edition of that and, uh, and you can get that, you know, terrywolfinger.com, but you can't get the first one because I have it. <laughs> as long as you didn't kidnap his wife and threaten his kid, because that would be wrong, but you can oh, kidnap yeah. his kid and threaten uh, his wife. That's expected of you. I, so. I, I think, uh, did I misspeak? I think I did, actually did, did it that way. I'll, I'll, I'll have to ask him because, you know. Again, You're very thorough. You probably did. You once, probably did both. Once I drain this, then I, I, I my memory goes. <laughs> yeah, then you're not responsible, right? So, yeah. very nice. But uh, Ken is also. You're also very big on promoting other artists. Like Ken, every time you've I've seen you ever get a compliment, you're like, "Thank you, thank you." And if you think that's good, you should check out my friends. You know, you know. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, because everyone else is uh, is so much better than I am. Uh, I mean, I'll tell you, you know, uh, <laughs> you you give me credit for introducing you to to Bill Plimpton, and you know, I, I'm grateful for your your mentioning that. But you know, uh, I gave my stuff to Bill Plimpton, and he never come came back to me and said, "Oh, I want to I want to uh, do the movie version of Magnum Farce." Uh, no, he 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 came to you though. And said, "I need to make a movie with you." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, by the way, Magnum no, Farce. Oh, no, I'm not jealous. No, so, so don't even. Well, go you did me. kidnap me. <laughs> um, see that right there where I'm pointing? Magnum Farce is a poster. Uh, guys, go YouTube that. Is it still our clips or the entire film available on YouTube? Uh, it, it's it's available somewhere from some past film festival. Uh, somewhere, you know, I'm I'm really I'm really sloppy with my own stuff. Uh, I, I I'm going to get better this year. I swear I'm going to get better with that. But, uh, okay, I just uh, full screen. Whoops. Um, it's a, Ken it's a, Mora, Mora Magnum Farce. Nice, I spell it right. I just put that in here so that I could put that here. Go uh, YouTube that. And Ken did a full-on 3D animated film called Magnum Farce. If you, it's very along the lines of uh, Police Squad or Airplane or you know that type of humor. Yeah. It's a spoof um, of Dirty Harry. Go, go watch that and then immediately cancel Ken Mora <laughs> because if you did that film now, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 it's a, you uh, would my, be beyond. My my apologies to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Chris had a great question, though, here. It was a more Chris innocent Brunson mind. says, where does your inspiration come from for your writing? And he is familiar with your writing. I uh -huh. know. Yes, uh, he's he's the one who actually bought my graphic Yeah, novel. Chris, you are the one. So if you would have returned that, Chris, he would have been negative sales. Yeah, so exactly. Thank you I for now. Have, I would have nothing. Uh, I would have no stars on, uh, on Amazon. So you, you'd Caravaggio... I'm I'm guessing that you were probably a longtime fan of his work, and then you did the other one that was Caged Birds, which was filthy, smutty, good time, fun. European, European. That's right. European, yeah. and <laughs> where like where did the mind come up with those things? They're so drastically different. Uh, you know, uh, the I. Uh, he was a great influence on me, uh, painting style wise, and so I just wanted to to learn a little bit more about him, uh, his biography, and it was such a Cyrano de Bergerac meets Lust for Life type story. I figured somebody must have made a movie, and I and I missed it. Uh, and someone did do a movie, and I won't uh, trash, I won't trash the movie because a lot of people love. Uh, you know, <coughs> Derek Jarman's <coughs> version of, of the movie. Uh, but I thought, you know, they totally missed the mark because it was such, uh, 
it sort of harkened back to the old Hollywood style swashbuckling life, uh, tragic sort of short life. I thought someone should, needs to write the uh, the screenplay, and so uh, so I did it, and and it actually got optioned by a, a Dutch a Dutch director, and uh, it, it actually I actually got it to the desk of uh, Johnny Depp's uh, agent. Oh who, wow! I did not know that story. Who who call who called me, and uh, and and talked to me in show busy talk which was way over my head. And uh, I managed to, uh, to uh, call the director back and try to get things happening, but, uh, but nothing, nothing did, but you know, I, I, I got an option. It, it was, you know, I'm one That's of those, awesome. the word I'm one of those Starbucks, awesome. Starbucks writers, you know, uh, you go to Starbucks and it's just like, everybody has a near miss Hollywood story. And, and that well, was my... let me let you in on a little secret, Ken. <laughs> and you know this is true. Yeah. If you create your own work, I mean literally create it, and you put it out, then there are no gatekeepers. The only downside is unless you're already independently wealthy, which you know I am, which yeah. then you won't make any money on it. Yes. But you will be very happy and satisfied. And that's kind of like when you make money, that's kind of what you're going for to begin with. That's my loser thought process. You know, but I, um, more than anything, um, and I know this is true for you too, we have to do these things. We have to make these things. It's exactly. not a choice. We have to. You, you know, because I'll tell you, you know, I, was, I was an e-commerce developer at the time that I wrote the screenplay and I won my first screenplay award and, and it got me uh, an agent and representation. This was before the option. And I did the stupid thing that everybody who, who wins that. And, and it's just, I quit my job, but I, it, it wasn't because I had a choice. It's because after I tasted that, I went, I went to work and I had code in front of me and my eyes just literally slid off the screen and my brain said nah i'm not doing this anymore and and i tried my hardest for a couple days and i just had to go to my my boss and say uh you know my my brain's just not working anymore uh, i i'm sorry i i just have to give uh i just have to give notice and uh and my wife god bless her uh she did not divorce me um and uh, she supported me. And uh, by the way, that Ken, you didn't mention you were in charge of the moon landing program, and that was in like 1974. And we've yes, never so. been back to the moon since. Yeah. So thanks. And, and, well, yeah. If if you want to know why uh, we blew up on the launch pad so many times, uh, I'm I'm sorry. Uh, you know, we we would have been there much sooner if, uh, if it weren't. You've got to you've got to break a few eggs if you want to make an omelet. Yeah. Uh, it, it's true which it is the water. worst thing you could say to the astronauts families after they've blown up and burned yeah, to death so, on the so for all those people who criticize spacex for uh for blowing up before reaching orbit uh i want you to know <laughs> that um you know it's but not i mean to, to be said you can play taps on the trumpet so yeah you know it's it's not easy starting a company <laughs> and you know and doing weird things, yeah. You know, just like, uh, but someday there will be tunnels connecting the world underground, and we'll be shuttling electric vehicles through them, and we'll be flying rockets <laughs> through the earth. By the way, Ken, yeah. you've just been harassed online, and I apologize. It says, "Cat and Paste says, wow, how does Ken find the time to blow his own trumpet?" <laughs> I I apologize for you, and the only reason I'm showing that publicly is to yeah. warn the kids out there that there are uh, cats out there that will will just flame them. So, well, you, you know, uh, I don't do anything the way you're supposed to. Uh, you know, if if you read books on how you write a screenplay or, or a story or anything like that, they they they're very linear, and you do the outline and stuff like that. 
and and, and I, I can't do things that way. Like like when I, I developed the script, you know, I, I knew how I wanted it to start and I knew how I wanted it to end. And I knew a couple scenes in the middle. I had no idea how it was going to connect. So I just wrote what I knew was going to be in there. And then I struggled to uh, to connect them. And it's basically, you know, like the way MacArthur uh, took on Japan. It's called island hopping. You know, you, you can't, when you have a, a foe that formidable, you can't just go island to island. I... I'm a and, huge yeah. fan of MacArthur and Lennon, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, I mean, because they they made uh, they made the Ruddles, and uh, without without them, uh, how would the the music business be without them? Uh, just, uh, well, I think I think everyone will agree that the real shame that the Beatles didn't stick around is that they never got to do auto tune. So. Yeah. I think they, Paul and Ringo, probably regret that. And if they had a time machine, they would probably go back and invent auto tune. So, just yeah. saying, just saying. That's true. Can you um, imagine if uh, if George Harrison were still around uh, at the time of AI? I mean, you can't spell George Harrison without AI. That's that's true. Great. Speaking of AI has nothing to do with AI. That is my cousin right there. Ladies and gentlemen, Rebecca Bergman. Oh. Cousin of Jim Lujan. And raised me from a baby. Oh, really? She's going to hate me saying that, but it's true. So, so it's all her fault. It's all her fault. But uh, And also, the, the Beatles had blisters on their fingers. Oh, Oh, so, so getting back to how would I find time to get the trumpet, uh, yes. you know, uh, I just have to do weird random shit all, all the time. So 10 years ago, I decided uh, I needed to take up the trumpet. And so here I am, and I still really can't play yet. But <laughs> I don't have to play yet. Yeah. Hold on one second, Ken. I love you too, Becky. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, oh boy, now we've got really good conversations going on now. So, uh, Rebecca, what's it like to be related to Jim Lohan? It's incredible. I can answer for her. It's incredible. <laughs> and, you know. Um, all right. Speaking of the incredible oneness of me whatever that means um i want to show you some more artwork so in that picture that i showed you of ennis gruber in the studio um there was some art rock and roll artwork in the back there's a ton of rock and roll artwork that i've done for this film and i'll probably collect that somehow and show you guys that later or put it out or something but um for now okay and, and afterwards actually i have some questions for you okay Let's jump into this. Will you forget the question or will you remember it? Uh, I'm sorry, what was that? Oh, never mind. Shh, just drink your tea. Okay. But uh, <laughs> here's a really weird looking. I I like this drawing because I don't think there's ever been a drawing of Kurt Cobain that looked anything like this. It's very stylized. It looks very, it kind of reminds me of Ralph Bakshi or something. But I did this really, really quick. Um, all of these that you're going to see, you're just done really, really quick on the iPad. Uh, you know, but I just, I really, I think the, the logo makes it, but yeah. So this was done in, in um, Procreate on the iPad, but yeah, I like the hand. I know it's bizarre, but uh, these are, it's, you know, it's kind of really fun about this is that the, it's very freeing to do these art uh, works that are going to appear on walls in the cartoon because they're not the main focus. So they, they don't have to be perfect. And when you're thinking that way, I think stuff can come out interesting, you know, <laughs> but we mentioned that uh, Ennis Gruber had a fascination for uh, 
Selena Gomez. <laughs> so here's Selena Gomez, the first picture I did ever. <laughs> but uh, I don't know why it cracks me up. It's funny. By the way, Selena Gomez is very pretty. I was never like a, a I won't say I wasn't a fan of her. I just never, you know. And I, no, I, I, I sound start. like I'm the first one to ever say that. Like I discovered her or something like that. Yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm feeling a little warm where I'm sitting right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, the nurse will come in and change you in a moment. But before that happens, let's look at this other picture of Selena Gomez. I love her eyes on this because she looks like sort of special Selena Gomez. <laughs> and, and I would never change it. But uh, I just, I think it's hilarious. I don't know why I think me drawing Selena Gomez is so funny, but it is. And uh, here's another one. This is the first one I did of her. And the, the proportions and stuff crack me up. I know, it's just ridiculous. But um, it brings me joy, and that's really all that matters at this point. But yeah, Ennis is, he's obsessed with her, with Selena Gomez. And you know what? After drawing her now, I think I am too. Yep, 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 yep. So um, I have one more too. Uh, I have, a, like I said, I have a ton of rock artwork that I'm working on for this, but... I'll show some of that later, but here's another one. The last one I'll show for this. I did this one today, but <laughs> it's a Spanish group called the Ramones. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, <laughs> I should play some of the uh, comments. Uh, Didi says, she is pretty. I know. That's why it's funny that I said it like I discovered it. Like, hey, did you guys know that Selena Gomez is pretty? Is this like a thing that's going on? Uh, Becky, my cousin, says it does look like Selena. Yeah. Gomez or Selena, the singer. So I don't know. Um, and they are all, thank you, Kat. They are all wonderful. And uh, some guy named uh, Bella Fay Media, who I'm going to block. Ken, do you know who that is? I'm sure. What a jerk. Wait, it says Ken Mora. Wait, what? What? Um, and uh, Christopher was thinking of Pierre Gasly, which I think we mi I missed part of a conversation, but that's okay because you can think of them. Are you guys having a secret conversation behind my back in front of my face? Oh, so. the, he, he said something about her being a uh, race car driver, and I was wondering if that was true. <laughs> I don't know. She's not a racist. That that by the way, they should call people that race cars or any kind of run in a race. They should all be called racists because that's what they do, oh, right? Just, if you do yeah. taxidermy, you're a taxidermist. I'm just saying. Oh. So, so, um, <laughs> so okay. And then uh, let's go back to the list here. Mm. I don't think I showed you guys Tommy. Um, Koviak yet. That's right, Kat. Uh, you don't worry. You won't fall in love with this guy. I hope not. Tommy Koviak is the illegitimate grandson of Emiliano Koviak. Oh. And I'm going to show you guys. Uh oh, did my iPad die dead? Uh oh, it died dead. All right, give me a second. I can pull him up now. Um. Yeah, he is he is kind of the the um ground troops, I guess you could call him for um let's see if this works. Nope. Uh he's kind of the ground, the boots on the ground for um Koviak. Now I posted him on Instagram and I'm gonna show you guys him now. Okay, so share screen. And I'm going to actually kind of give you a little tease of his voice. <laughs> so exciting. How do I do this? Okay, give me one second. Technology is fun for the kids. Okay, here we go. Share screen and screen share. Share screen. Oh boy. This is what people tune in for. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Share screen. I actually was going uh, was going to show it on my iPad 
and uh, the iPad died. The iPad was so bored that it died. That's right, which I know you guys can relate to that. This is uh, Tommy Koviak. Now, if you could just imagine. Ken Mora, can you hear me? Ah, there we go. Did I just dip out for a few seconds? Oh, I think I I thought I dipped out. So, okay. Um, I won't let you forget your question, but uh, ask uh, ask our friend here a, a question. Are you there, Ken? Yes, yes, I oh, am. Oh, ask Tommy oh. Koviak a question, and oh, he will answer. Oh, ask Koviak a question. Oh, okay. Um, If you're the illegitimate grandson of the mobster Kobiak, why do you bear his last name? Uh, uh, what a thing I'm going to bury you. I'm, what if I bury you, huh? How'd you like that, huh? <laughs> Asking me these frigging questions, I'll go in there and smack you. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that's, our, that's our friend. Oh, we're getting some beefcake. Well, here's the thing, Christopher. He is beefcake, but he's uh, he's like a little mini beefcake because he's uh, he's five foot one. So let's just start with that. He's five foot one. He's a little short guy, kind of mean, uh, you know, kind of uh, kind of. Oh no, I've started an obsession. No caveat, Koviak. So he here's the backstory. Um, his mother was a showgirl and probably uh, one of the mistresses of Koviak. And so uh, I don't know if Koviak got divorced or if he was widowed or what, but then uh, when Tommy came around, you know, probably when he was like six or seven and he started hanging around the family and doing things, Koviak just uh, kind of adopted him, although it's his illegitimate kid. But they don't believe in blood tests or stuff like that. So that's Tommy Koviak. But he does some bad things in the movie. See, Koviak in this movie, Koviak's too old to get around, but Tommy gets around for him. And Tommy's kind of not kind of a mean guy. But uh, <laughs> Salty Snacks is Leisure Suit Larry. <laughs> that's a compliment. I like it. Um, <laughs> all right. So, uh, I just marked that off my list here. I want to show you something too. Who's ready for another clip? You guys love clips. Okay. Um, I posted something a couple of, uh, was it a couple of weeks ago? Maybe a week ago. Uh, hang on a sec. I posted something. There we go. And I know a lot of you were scratching your heads when I posted this on You'll scratch your heads after I tell you what it is, but uh, dag nabbit. Oh, the joy. Um, I posted something on Instagram and, and I know a few people were like, what the heck? Why the heck? Who the heck? But I, Again, I'm just buying some time so I can show you it. Here we go. All right, all right. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I need a producer. <laughs> okay. Oh, I can show them the window. I can show the whole window. You can see that, right? Yeah. Look at there's comments and everything. Anyways, I posted this Charles in Charge artwork. Uh, you know, um, let me get a better picture of it. Um, I posted this and I know uh, people were like, what, why? Who, what, why? Oh my gosh. There we go. Okay. I posted this a while back. Um, let's move us around a little bit. Nope, not like that. Not like that, but like that. 
Um, and I, I didn't put any context to it. I just kind of, you know, uh, <laughs> I uh, didn't give any explanation. But tonight, tonight, you guys get the explanation that you deserve. And that is, there's a scene where a character is obsessively talking about Charles in Charge in this film. And he does something. He shows, he bears his soul. He bears his soul. He actually um, shows that he has a Charles in Charge tattoo. There you go. <laughs> there you go. We'll see that again. And he is in charge. And I just wanted to show you guys that. Wow. This is going to be all the rage at all the kids are going to have this within a week or two. So <laughs> it's all worth the wait. So the Charles in charge of your belly, too. So but cheers, ladies and gentlemen. Cheers. <laughs> Don't worry, you guys will go to sleep. You'll never, ever, you'll think about that again. Don't worry. Uh, Jim, Jim's mind both fascinates and frightens me at the same time. Thank you. I'm going to put that on the, on the, <laughs> I'm going to put that on, um, on the movie poster thing. Uh, he resembles your brother, Steve. <sighs> I wait. You mean Kov, uh, Tommy Koviak, not the belly? Okay, because uh, that's I was just gonna say. You know, you know. Yes, Christopher, especially in scenes. Yes. <laughs> so, um, let's check the list here. Uh, rock, da, 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 da. I think I've shown all the clips. Um, what else? Okay, I will take. The questions from the audience, if anybody has any questions uh, for Ken or me. But you, um, sir, in the red, yes. What is your question? Yes. I would like, so now, uh, you, you compose music without knowing. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and that is a great mystery to me. And I would like to know if someday uh, you will share with us on this cast how you go about doing that, or if you've done so already, because I would love to know. I would like to see the magic that is the native talent of Jim Lujan composing music uh, in your in your uh element yes <laughs> um i could do that i could show you um one of the one of the things that is i'm finding is that when i try to write specifically for a scene i will write for it and be like oh and then and then weeks later go back and go and and accidentally come across something i recorded and be like oh this works better and then use that original thing for something else i almost never in other words i don't think i'm i don't think i'm that good at composing for a specific scene i'm just good at at cultivating what i already have recorded and go oh this would go good here or hearing in reverse hearing it just making up music and going oh you know what this sounds like it'd do really well in a car chase or like I have car chases or this would, this would go really well. And, you know, and they go to the, you know, get a manicure, something like that. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, it's because I suspect, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you have a, a great part of the full fungus composed and you're kind of afraid to admit that you have you have that done and and that you think that it's pretty darn good and i'm thinking and i haven't even heard it but i'm thinking it probably is pretty darn good 
to answer your question, yes, yes, no, yes, maybe, sometimes, and yes. I knew it. Kind of suspected it. Knew it. Knew it. That's surprising. Knew it. Interesting. If I don't like something you say, I'm going to say, Ken Mora, kiss my grits. <laughs> oh, and my phone just died. So my iPad is dead. Phone is dead. But you know what's not dead? Our friendship. It is not dead. So that's the truth, Ken. The truth is when I try to record for a specific scene, it's not like the, mu the music comes out badly. It's just, it, it to me, is never as inspired as, w as when I, for example, I did record a bunch of mink fungus jazz. I probably have 11 or 12 things recorded. Oh. Um, and probably out of that, probably seven of those for sure will be in the film, for sure. Like they're, the, I am happy with them. The other ones, maybe they'll be incidental or whatever. I don't know, but um, but I didn't record those thinking, oh, this is going to be the scene when they're having dinner, or this is going to be. So kind of what I what I've done is I've made this film without music, and I'm experimenting going throwing music. Like for example, the bowling scene that I've shown before, I've played it with jazz in the background and it works really well. But I also had this other style that I wanted to um put to that scene that I thought would work really well. So I haven't yet made that full decision, but, um, but I didn't sit down to write something for it. Yeah. I just kind of had, I, I have so much, always have so much music laying around. So um, what, what did uh, Dee, Dee says, Leanne needs to get Jim a new charger. Yeah. I, you know, we were out all day and everything, you know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Becky says, Jimmy was born with creativity and he has been drawing since he could hold a pencil. Okay. I'm glad she didn't say his pencil because that's, <laughs> then that's, we're calling child authorities. So, uh, oh, and Paul Pate is here. Paul Pate has said, said, says, I lost my pants again. You never had pants, you liar. So, <laughs> um, but thank you, Ken. Thank you. Um, I will one day show uh, me making some music. So, like, what I am inspired when I make the music. I'm just not inspired to write for a certain scene. But I might hear something and then say, hey, I want to write something kind of like that or something, you know. Yeah. Um, but I could do that. I could, I mean, a lot of it's ad libbed, anyways. I don't, I mean, all of it's ad libbed. I don't read music. So yeah. it's all just, you know. But I could do that. I could showcase it. That would be that would be fun, um, and I'll have you play trumpet on it. So that would be a good challenge to send you something. So you have to play trumpet on this. You know what? Okay, Ken, this is a world exclusive. Again, uh, um, now you're making me pay. <laughs> I could. So the jazz, a lot of the jazz in the full fungus, is very very experimental, and it's. Um, super avant-garde and like the notes don't exist oh so i could suck <laughs> so, well some would say this but we like to use a different word we like to say it's on the edge of sucking so which on the edge of sucking should be the title of your next project by the way <laughs> the adult thing um but i could send you something and you could just do a, a just a ramshackle off note trumpet solo on it and it would be brilliant if you did that i think that would be like just so oh my girl like those notes are so off that they must be on and i just might i just can't comprehend it because they are so advanced that's what people will say yeah so let's talk about that let's do that i'll pay you fifty thousand dollars oh there we go okay or oh, you, you have to, you have to kill somebody too we have to kill somebody again. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all right. Um, we're at the portion of the program where um, I will take some questions from the audience. But if there are no questions, I will be ashamed and leave. Jim's bot, book of tricks, sketchbook rocks, 
simple yet complex? Yes. The answer is yes. 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 By the way, all the proceeds for the full fungus will go to uh, buying Paul Pate pants. <laughs> because we have this thing called Pants Aids. Pants Aid. And it's we're gonna it's gonna be a big concert and yeah uh, and, and it it write it writes itself it's it's pants for Paul Pate. You know what our motto is? One leg at a time. Oh, beautiful! That's actually the name of the tribute song that we're all gonna do. That everybody on this chat is gonna have a line just like we are the world. One leg. <laughs> wait, wait, Chris. I'm sorry. Chris has a trolley question. Trolley question. Ah. All right. I'll give you a trolley answer. Or is it trolley? But what is the question? Hmm. By the way, Paul is a triple threat PPP. Paul <laughs> Give him pants and let him leave the house. I believe that Paul Pate has a future. <laughs> Give him pants and leave him in his house. I believe that Paul wears pants. And do do. Um, let me bring this up real quick while I have your attention. Um, that part of The Greatest Love of All by Whitney Houston that I believe in long ago. That's the same thing as Gordon Lightfoot's. Uh, if you could read my mind. I believe in long ago the children something that can't take it. That song. And then Whitney Houston says, I believe in long ago. Do, do. I don't know how hers goes either, but just think about that. When I first heard that song, I was like, that's Gordon Lightfoot. But uh, uh, somebody named Bella Faye Media, probably a bot says uh, paul will you wear them on a train will you wear them on a plane if you're not careful with the zipper you'll wear them in pain so that's how that goes okay question okay i'm reading this without previewing it are you going to have a character that portrays grandpa he used to say i love each one bow one the same. He used to say Bo one Ichi one. The same. He used to tell all his grandkids he loves us all. Stay here. I want to show you something. Speaking of the grandfather. Becky's gonna be jealous. So Becky, Dee Dee at Willingham, this is how we met, kind of. She painted our grandfather. This is Becky and my grandfather, Raphael. And he was a little dude, very wiry little dude, but strong. He was super strong. And he was used to be a, when he was a little boy, he was a, used to be a sheep herder in Mexico. And uh, he used to stay out in the, in the fields and stuff by himself, like at eight years old, herding sheep and uh, looking for UFOs. So thank you, Didi. Thank you. Oh my God. <laughs> the uh, cat is singing. If Emiliano could read my mind, wow. If cat is in love with Emiliano Koviak, there must be thousands or millions of others that would be in love with him as well. I should start like a Tiger Beat magazine for my cartoon characters, and 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 then a theme park. That, that's coming. A theme park's coming one day. Luhan Land. You guys are going to love it. Whew. All right. Um, Ken, I think, you know what? I'll tell you what. We'll go five. Wait, what time is it? We'll go five more minutes to end on an even number. Okay, five more minutes. But we're just going to sit here and stare at each other for five minutes. Hmm. Yes, yes. Where they they say this a lot on on um, art casters. Where can people find your stuff? And uh, what are you working on? Tell tell us 
tell us fine people where they can find your stuff. Like if they want to get you know you better, where, where can they go? Uh, well, uh, KenMora.com uh, because I like it make I like to make it hard for people to to find where I am. So, not KenMora.com Ken because then oh look at I yes. just <laughs> look Ken I just posted your link. <laughs> Yeah, Con Mora. that's it exactly. So, <laughs> so Conmora, that. isn't that Conmora <laughs> is a uh, isn't he fighting Godzilla? Yeah, actually, it uh, you know it, it's it's really because uh, I had the uh, the URL that that goes with the the moniker I'm using here, and then it turns out I had some old Google ad ad uh, tracking thing on there. So for the longest time, the website was not working. And I didn't know that. And then, so that crashed. But KenMora.com is a very simple site, so which befits me. So so that's nice. the, the easy one. So until I fix everything else, KenMora.com is the easy one. Very nice, very nice. So I'm just posting a conversation going on about uh, animated stalking and, and such. Uh, Kenmara.com. Um, I know that a lot of you, uh, oh, hold on. Uh, <laughs> by the way, Kat, read this and then you can answer this while I speak. What other cartoon characters have you fallen for, Kat? I noticed that Pepe Le Pew and Foghorn Leghorn don't seem to be making public appearances anymore. It's true. True. All right. Um, I just wanted to prove that I do have hair. I just didn't comb it today. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, it's a good look. So you can wear this hat. <sighs> All right. So um, one ominous comment before we go. <laughs> Miliano isn't the only one who isn't afraid of my sniper. My sniper husband, by the way, great 80s sitcom. Didn't last too long. <laughs> It was number one with a bullet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then it uh, took off like a shot. And, uh, <laughs> yes. So, um, Ken, I have to thank you, man. It's legally I have to thank you. It says it in our contract. <laughs> um, we've worked together quite a bit off and on on different things. We haven't ha had our falling out where over money or drugs or both. <laughs> Um, and, and, uh, uh, and uh, I, need to, I need to thank you publicly for um, for my role in uh, Bill Plimpton's next film uh, slide. That's right. That's you right. Put, you put a little bug in our uh, in the man's ear. Yes. And so now I am uh, I'm uh, a voice in that film uh, coming up. So uh, thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> yes, can both Ken and I are doing voices and Tom Racine are doing voices in Bill Plimpton's next, pretty much finished now, animated film called Slide. Um, it played in France, in Annecy. They played an unfinished version there. It's going to be playing in Portland, like, really soon. And it'll be, I'm sure it'll be making the rounds and stuff, but Ken over here plays, um, is it the sh sheriff? Uh, no, I play a... Uh, a Jay Lyle. Uh, Jay, yes, Jay Lyle. Jay Lyle, the producer. Yes, the, the yeah, he's a public. he plays a film producer from the 1930s or whatever. You know. A producer in Hollywood. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah, we're all gonna get canceled, but it's okay. <laughs> we're, we're we're going down together. Um, two more things before we go. Uh, Jim, tell us what's the biggest conspiracy from Luhan Land. Um, biggest conspiracy from Luhan land would be, um, wow. Whatever happened to dollar money, the rap group. And if you watch all that glitters, my film, all that glitters or the series, watch it either way, watch it both ways. Same time. Um, you'll find out what happened to them. That's the biggest conspiracy. But the public doesn't know that. So, and uh, TD says thanks. Christopher is ducking behind the chair to Miss Cat's husband. 
it'll go right through the chair, Christopher. Come on now. And uh, Dee Dee says, <laughs> Ken. I'm sure that's the tone that she has, because that sounds like it. And I'm publicly calling out Gary Hodges, because you've been very quiet. And when you're quiet, we know you're up to something. Sounds like Gary's working on the next DVSM book, because he's being very sneaky. Watch out for that kid. Anyways, um, all right, so... Thank you, guys. Thank you for checking out Ken's stuff. Thank you, Ken, big time. Thank you for everything. And thank you for um, delivering all the way from up north. You had to do a little temporary recording studio up there <laughs> just to do this. Ah, and uh, that was fun. it's fun being friends. And uh, Bowways. <laughs> Not Bowways. It was I love you all. I love Bo One Ichi One. That's what I remember. So that was my grandfather. And I love you too, Becky. And uh, I will just say goodbye. And we have fun. And uh, uh, last thing I'll say is full fungus. Expect it around May of next year. Because originally I was going to say January, but that buys me some extra time. So probably like May of uh, next year. And... Uh, I want to say good morning, everybody. This has been good. Thank you guys for thank you guys for all the nice things and support too. That's been really really cool. I appreciate it. So, with that, we'll all wave like this till the stream goes off. Bye, everybody. Thank I'll you guys it. for tuning in. Like everybody, they do at the end of uh, Nick and Phil. We love you all. We love you all. Even Gary. We even. Let's freeze. <laughs>